Hello everybody and welcome to Remember Who You Really Are. Welcome. It's our show uh, we're, uh, that we are doing in collaboration with Awake TV and we're very happy that we have been able to have so many episodes, beautiful episodes on this show. And uh, today it's our last episode for season mm. one. So me and Daniel thought we'll do something uh, special for this episode and uh, talk about things that are very important. Talk about experiences that we have had, realizations that we have had. Yeah, so we are at the season finale. <laughs> yes. Um, I would love to speak about some very important topics that in, I would say, past 10, 12 years came continuously. Questions from friends, students, teachers all over the world. The first one is a very interesting one and uh, very delicate. It's about death. People uh, try to understand death. People try to um, be aware of uh, what's going to happen at that moment and after that moment. And uh, I really wanted to approach a little bit about this subject from another perspective. Um, from our experience and what we learn from, uh, of course, uh, I would say experts in this field that they can meditate continuously and they can open their heart continuously, we realize that death for them is uh, just a simple meditation tool. So they don't basically get too much in this subject, they just consider like a, a door, like a movement to um, another beautiful uh, life. And uh, lately, we also realized that uh, before you start your meditation, it's good to think a little bit ab about death to one of the things that the elders are teaching is to, to see yourself in that moment when you are dying. We are talking about a very important moment when you see all your life. So basically why they do that? Because they want to make you aware when you think at that moment you are dying that you are going to literally balance the things you've done in your life, mm -hmm. good, not so good. So it's also for us an impulse to have a better life now. Yeah. So it's, it's an important uh, step. I, I guess it also comes with the realization that you are more than your body, right? So death is not the end. We're talking about death as a door to the next life, if you want to say, in, in such a way. So I guess, and, and it's very interesting, like thinking about yourself, right? Living your body, living this life, you automatically come to think of regrets, mm -hmm. right? Things that you wanted to do and you haven't done, things that you did and you didn't want to do, mm -hmm. for example. So you get to evaluate your daily life, all your life so far, just by being aware, contemplating the fact that life in this body is temporary and, and nobody knows when, you know, this cycle is gonna close and another cycle is gonna open. So I think it's, it's a very, very important um, thing to contemplate uh, 
yeah every day before your you know you start your meditation before you go deeper yeah where am i yeah the next uh, subject is about fasting and sleeping both subjects are filled with books studies and and much more um, just a couple of things we have to understand that um, there is no good meditation without fasting period um, wherever you go any ashram any monastery any place you go there is a clear program uh, there is usually 16 hours between the last uh, let's say dinner last meal and next day right and there are also six seven eight hours between if you are eating twice ideally you it's good to do fasting with discernment which means you can have uh, each day something not so much so you keep your mind sharp right um, it's a lot of things to say about fasting about food uh, we study especially last couple of weeks uh, microgreens and uh, the effect on, on our bodies myself and Agati and uh, we find uh, we still believe that raw food Greens yeah. are the healthiest thing and the best. The easiest thing to digest, right? So we are, we have been vegan for many years now. So that's a lifestyle choice that works for us. It's something that came naturally in the course of our lives. Uh, I guess we do feel lighter uh, because of this. But at the same time, it's important for us to... And I, and I understand the desire sometimes and how food is marketed at the same time, mm. right? Everywhere you turn, there is food, there is something delicious, there is something sweet, there is something salty. So it's, it takes so much time, it takes so much thought, it takes so much energy. And uh, th that's one aspect, right, of food today. But when we tend to overeat whatever it is that we're eating, right? Then, of course, you will not be able to be comfortable to stay in silence. You won't be able to stay comfortable to meditate or to pray. So it's important to have a schedule that works for this part of our lives, right? If we want to increase this aspect in our lives if we want to do more if we want to go deeper one of the things that i think it's important is that the the less your food is processed the easier it will be to digest right that's why you have all this movement today of you know uh, no processed food it because it's easier your body will feel lighter but it doesn't mean you have to be also thinking about food that you cannot have i think that's a counter service to whatever you are doing but generally longer times between meals uh eating dinner early uh, maybe having your breakfast later not the first thing you do when you wake up uh, so giving that space to your body to clean up everything if you have your practice maybe in the morning you know with an empty stomach it's going to be so much easier mm. rather rather than after a meal right so find what works with you with the program that you have right with the responsibilities that you have and sleeping now there are two i would say three actually groups here uh, in the sleeping uh, subject um, the first group, of course, they have these sleeping patterns uh, late or they sleep a lot or not at all. So there is, uh, you know, this mix of beta and uh, 
alpha and uh, delta waves with no clear uh, pattern and discipline. Majority of the world is like that, right? But then we have a second group that uh, they have a pattern of sleeping, uh, let's say, from 9 in the evening till like 3 in the morning, around 6 hours, like 3 hours before midnight, 3 hours after midnight, and they wake up uh, doing meditation and exercises. And the, this is the first system that you can approach if you are in meditation. The second one is um, using the night as um, a way of uh, connecting with God. Uh, a lot of systems, including uh, the elders of Mount Athos, are using uh, all-night vigils, they call it, which uh, they consider a really, really good thing in a sense that they literally start to pray. Uh, uh, they consider the uh, sunrise uh, for them is the sunset for us, right? So they start the day in the evening and they finish uh, the, after a whole night uh, prayer and meditation. They finish early morning, like four or five, which I have done this program in uh, Arizona there at the St. Anthony Monastery and it was really good for me. So you can use this system, but certainly you have to do it with discernment. So uh, if you use the all night vigils, you need a couple of good hours in the morning. And then before you start the, uh, the night, uh, if you try to use this system, or at least if you want to pray or meditate, let's say from nine or 10 until uh, two in the morning, you have to do it. Um, with uh, some hours, couple of hours before of uh, uh, a good nap. And the last subject would be, um, I want to speak a little bit about stillness. A very important subject. A lot of people, they say, do we really need to go uh, up to the mountains and to... Uh, how can we find stillness? Very good question. How can we find stillness in the middle of all this busyness, <laughs> you know, craziness? And uh, I believe stillness comes first with a disciplined lifestyle. And I'm talking here less news, less external uh, factors that keeps us in in a level of stress, and we cannot meditate right. Uh, then, of course, if we are the lucky person to live in a good place or you can go in the middle of the nature and to have a couple of hours of stillness each day with, combined with prayers and meditation, that would be, I would say, the best way of living. <laughs> I guess also, you know, when you have a lot of things that you are responsible for, when you have a lot of things to do, it's harder to find stillness, right? Because that's always something that occupies your mind. So an option would be to reduce things that we are doing, if it's possible, right? In an amount where we actually are able to manage that, that we're actually able to say, you know, from this time to this time, I don't have anything to do. That's the only thing I'm doing and I can stay in stillness uh, or do the same if you cannot stop things that you're doing right give yourself permission because first of all it's permission to yourself give yourself permission to take this amount of time for yourself to stay not to go out, not to watch something, not to see friends, not to, but just to stay, for you to stay. And then allow yourself, the moment it becomes you know, a habit, then it's going to be easier and it's something that's going to be rejuvenating you, actually vitalizing you in order to be able to do everything that you have to do, right? So I think it's very important it, it, in order to have healthy relationships, it's important to find stillness. 
in order to have a healthy relationship with yourself, it's also important to, to find that. So try it. Yeah, I, I mean, we have witnessed and we read so many books and uh, things about uh, uh, desert fathers and uh, Himalayan monks and uh, all this uh, ascetical uh, lifestyle. And obviously, uh, nowadays, it's, it's not something that it's easy to do for uh, a lot of reasons but we still do advise if you are on the path of stillness to make efforts uh, to avoid as much as possible uh, things places that you know that are not uh, the best uh, thing for you if you try to find uh, stillness, right? Uh, there are a lot of talks now about stillness is inside of you and people, they try to convince themselves that you don't need to uh, do anything, but you do need to do something. Stillness, indeed, it is inside of you, but you have to find that stillness and um, you need to work a lot also for the external factors that are a huge influence nowadays. Saying that we are grateful for your love and patience for all this uh, already 12 so, mm -hmm. episodes, right? For your support. For your support. Which is very important. Remember, uh, you can find us all all the time at the School of the Heart. We have events, I would say, each month, mm -hmm. more or less. We have teacher trainings, we have conferences, uh, a lot of good news. Uh, Lots of teachers around the world. Connect with them. If you're looking for a workshop in your language, uh, ask them. Maybe you can have uh, different sessions with them. So we are growing it's beautiful people want to know more and more and want to practice more and more want to find stillness more and more and um, we are here wherever you are we love you we love you and god bless you all